Morning. Mm. This video is going to be all about how to save some money on outdoor gear. And um, today's snack of choice is a breakaway. It's soon to be gone from our shelves here in the UK. So I'm going to give you some examples of outdoor gear that I've uh, acquired over the years that I've managed to get a bargain on and in some cases practically free. So hopefully this video can give you some um, ideas, some inspiration on how you can save some money and um, if you've got any questions about the things I'm going to show you or the ways in which I've managed to save some money please leave them in the comments. If you've got any ideas how to save money that I haven't covered in this video, also leave those in the comments. Um, so enough waffle, let's go on with it and drink my massive pint of tea. Ah, wet my whistle. By the way, if you hear any dogs barking, that's neighbours that way and probably that way. And if you hear any Digging, it's the builders who've just started working next door as soon as I started filming. And also, a bit of this video I wanted to film outside. Of course, it started raining. <laughs> Yay! Let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this pair of gloves. Now, if you're looking for outdoor gear, your first port of call is probably going to be your local outdoor shop if you're lucky to have one. If you're not then maybe when you're traveling around or on your holidays you'll go into a town or city that has some outdoor stores. So that could be your first port of call. And as with everything these days, outdoor stores and their items within are costing lots of money these days. So your first thing to do when you get into an outdoor store is head for the sale racks or look for the in this case, red and white label on items around the store. I won't mention any shop names because uh, yeah, this is not a free advert for them. But this particular store was in Keswick in the Lake District, just having a wander around. And on the glove rack was this pair of gloves. <laughs> and they had a little red and white tag on them. And I got them for better than half price. Um, and the only reason they were on sale was used for a photo shoot. And as you can see, they're in pretty good nick. Uh, I have used them now for a few years, and they still look pretty good. The leather and um, whatever kind of composite material. They're waterproof up to a point. They've, they've been out in the rain. They, they work really well. This isn't a review video anyway. It's just of examples, but... They've served me well. They've got those nice little phone, phone sensitive fingers there. And yeah, they, I think originally, now I will mention some prices in this video, but I take that with a pinch of salt. These were, I think originally 75 pounds and I got them better than half that uh, in on this sale. Also, um, I am a member of the BMC. I'll put a link below. Um, British Mountaineering Council and they give you 10 to 15 percent off in stores here in the UK and I was able to actually use that discount as well even though these were already on sale normally you can't do that but I did they let me do that on that day so I got a bargain there if you can't find what you want in your proper outdoor stores the next place I can suggest you have a look are charity shops as you know, if you follow this channel, I'm a big fan of charity sh charity stores, char charity shops, Goodwill stores, I think there's another name for them if you're in America or uh, elsewhere. And I've got a couple of examples of things i found. This one, I don't even know what it was originally for. A case for something, and it was, I don't even know what I paid for this, maybe pound, two pound, not even that. But I found it to be perfectly useful to put my candle lantern in. It fits perfectly. Um, if you've got any ideas what you think, let's take this out, what you think this might have originally been 
designed for. It's definitely something of a similar shape to this with a little separate section there and has a zip. I think when I saw it in the shot I thought That's, that just might be the right size for my candle lantern. And it is. And like I say, I paid probably a pound for this. So it's charity shops, definitely a good place to look. Another example, something I've shown on the channel before. Can you see it? Yeah. A rab gelée. Uh, this one, again, I'll tell you a price for what it's worth. I paid £8.99 in a charity shop for this. And it's uh, water resistant, it's down, it's rab, so you know it's going to be good quality. It was in perfect condition. Since I've had it, it has had one little rip. That was me. Um, yeah, a bit of gaffer tape sorted that out. It's been my go-to layer for keeping me warm. You'll have probably seen it in a few videos. It's still in good nick. It's lost a few feathers over the time. And um, as I've shown in a video before, it all tucks into its own inside pocket. I'm not going to be able to do that live. Live and direct. Let's see how long it takes. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Come on, come on. Just as the builders start digging their hole even louder next door. Yeah, so you get the idea. And then the zip goes across there. Sorted. Um, £8.99. Originally, a, a lot more than that. Um, you, you can have a look on Rab's website if you want. See what the current price for their equivalent jacket is. Uh, that one, they probably won't do that model anymore. But anyway, charity shops. Check them out to save some money. Another type of shop you might have on your high street um, or online are army surplus or military surplus stores I've bought loads of stuff from them over the years there's a few websites I use and I've gone into army surplus shops where I, where I see them um, you get gear a lot cheaper because it's it's surplus sometimes it's been used um, it's been sitting around in warehouses for a long time, so you're going to get a bargain. And a lot of the time, it's the companies that make the gear for the military also make um, outdoor gear for, you know, Joe Public. This particular jacket is a Dutch military jacket. If you're able to see that, it's, um, this sort of jacket, if you bought it like the equivalent high street version would probably cost you a fair bit because it's, it's very good good quality it's got all the zip pockets and pit zip, uh, not pit zips, pit, pit holes <laughs> and ventilation holes little things for your, for your badge and your ID if, if you want to put something on there elasticated sleeves, no, no velcro sleeves, I don't like them and um, yeah, it's been a pretty well used jacket. You've got these that I don't think they're officially inside pockets. They're the lining of the pocket, but they work really well as as sort of dump dump pockets. Not dump pockets, you know, pockets to put lots of stuff in, in the inside. So yeah, army surplus, military surplus stores. Another idea to save some money. Mentioning online, I've got a couple of examples of things I've got off eBay. Not on a not a sponsor, but you know, I'm either going to say that online auction website that you all know. Yes, eBay. Um, I bought loads of stuff on there over the years. Not just outdoor gear, all sorts of things. And these are just some examples of outdoor stuff. So I've got this pack which you may have seen in some of my videos that's uh, combat uk i think i got this for about 15 quid second hand um, only reason i think the person was getting rid of it 
they either didn't want it anymore but it's got a tiny little bit of damage here to the, the strap but it's been repaired by the previous owner and it still works otherwise in really good condition I've added my own little uh, touches to it personalize it and it's been a really useful bag which I don't just use for hiking I use it for going into town going to shops it's got plenty of plenty of pockets compartments you've got the middle bit you've got the main bit where's the zip gone yeah. plenty of plenty of room in there lots of little sections there and it's been my my go-to bag and it's expandable I'll probably do another video on this and showing all the pouches and things you can attach to it that's just one example another one are the hard to find quite popular Stanley cook set I got this off eBay oh, don't know how much I paid not much came with a cup which it doesn't normally come with it normally has the little green cups inside it which I did get but I've taken them out so I got that with this uh, I think this is a Tatonka or something yeah all steel I've shown this in the video before anyway this cook set at the moment I've just got my stove uh, my burner thing in there but yeah that's another thing you can find stuff not only cheaper places like eBay and other auction websites but you'll find things that are no longer sold in the shops so that's another way of saving money so let's say you've been to the shops you've been online and you still haven't found all the bits you need for your outdoor uh, adventures the other thing you can do is look around your house to repurpose things you've already got so you're not going to spend any money this is going to be free so here are some examples this is a climbing chalk bag I used to do a bit of climbing I haven't done it for a while now but chalk bags are actually really good at uh, using for other things because they're they're pretty well made most of them and you know, they're made for being outdoors and made to be you know dragged around rock faces and stuff like that <clears throat> so they're going to be made, built to last this one's even got like a nice fluffy lining Mr. Baggins and I use this one for my Stanley cook set which just so happens to fit perfectly with room to spare for the gas cylinder which is not in there at the moment a little pot stand and I can even fit a little little pouch with all the lighters and spare bits for making sparks fits in there as well that's one example another one pencil cases you've probably got some pencil cases in your house whether you've got kids who are still at school whether you're not long left school or college you've probably got some pencil cases lying around and they do make really useful organizers or pouches that can easily slot into your bag and this particular one it's even a kind of outdoorsy type design. It's even got a compass on it. I think I showed this. I originally got this in a charity shop. And it's then been sort of reused for all sorts of things since then. I think it was a brew kit at one point. But I had it still lying around. And now it's being used as storage for carving tools. So we've got a few different carving knives in here. And on the other side, I've got the best knife, my outdoor knife, Fan Dabby Dozy. That's my proper skein do for you Scots out there. That's a really cool knife. And uh, sharpening stone in there as well. It will fit quite a lot in here. So that's repurposing things you've already got so you don't have to spend any money 
Another example, something that you would normally just chuck in the recycling or the rubbish. What am I going to do with this? Well, if you watched my last video, you'll have seen I used it when I was rehydrating my meal. Put it in here, seal it up, put it in your jacket or whatever. I've seen a few people, including Simon the Bloke in the Woods and a few others, uh, use this method. You put your, put your meal inside, shove it in your jacket, keeps you warm, keeps the food warm, and it rehydrates a bit better and a bit more effective. And it costs nothing. While we're talking about food, briefly, you might buy trail mix in ready-made packets and spend lots of money on that, or you just go to the supermarket, get yourself some, some nuts, some seeds, some sweets, put them all together, and it costs a lot less money. Mmm, nice. I've got some hazelnuts, almonds, pumpkin seeds, and jelly babies. Care for a jelly baby? And make a nice, nice little trail mix. And you save a lot of money. The final way to save money is to make your own gear. So, I will do some external shots of this because it will be easier for you to see it. This is my work in progress blanket, bush shirt, or hoodie. I made this from a blanket that I found in a charity shop, of course. The blanket was about a three quid, something like that. And I spent a good few hours over a period of time hand sewing this together. There are some pictures on my Instagram of the, the progress I made with this, if you want to have a look. It's not finished, it needs some proper edging for the sleeves and uh, the pocket here. But it fits and it is incredibly warm when you've got it on. And it's pure wool. Um, I think the blanket itself is about 60, 70 years old and still in really good condition. You can see the hood, which was the most complicated bit. Can you see it? There it is. So you can see where I kind of, it's, it's all a bit rough and ready, but it, it works. So I've got the cord going around there, just a bit of paracord, pulls that nice and taut. And I'm really happy with that. It just needs dyeing a slightly more outdoorsy color rather than baby blue. So make your own gear is a way of saving money. Yes, I bought the blanket, but that was three quid. I used up quite a lot of um, thread, which was thread I already had in a sewing kit. Um, the paracord I already had. And the little um, stopper, whatever you call it, this, this thing. That was off another bag that I wasn't using. So yeah three quid plus time, that's that's what it cost me. Another thing, which I could, don't know if I'm gonna be able to get in shot. I'll have to pull back a bit. Is this cherry wood walking staff, which you will have seen in some of my videos. It's quite long. <laughs> so this was originally Picked it up when we were on holiday in the Lake District uh, back in 2014, I think it was. 2014? Yeah, that's right. Um, the stick itself came back with us. It sat in the garage. Two different garages because we moved during that time. And it's, it sat in total for about six years untouched, still with a bark on it. And then in 2020, during that year of fun that we had, um, I wanted to occupy myself on one of my days off. I stripped the bark off it and shaped, shaped it a little bit but left most of this as it was because I thought it was a really cool shape. Uh, gave it a bit of an oil, gave it some varnish and that's been a 
a good friend to me on many of my hikes. You've seen it in some of the videos. A very helpful and useful walking companion. It's been used to hold up tarps and tents before as well, because you can tie things off around here. You can use it to hook down blackberry bushes to get to the decent ones at the top. Or slows if you're making slow gin. So there you go. Forage things, they don't cost anything. Again, it's just time. Yes, I had to buy some varnish for it, but that and the the little rubber ferrule ferrule on the end, which cost like one pound fifty or something. Pretty cheap. A lot cheaper than buying a uh, ready-made one. There you go. Make your own gear. Another way to save money. So I hope that video was interesting. I hope it inspired you to uh, have a look around and see if there's anything in your house you can use, reuse, repurpose, make into something useful. Get out there in the high street, check out your charity shops, check out your local outdoor stores, check the sale racks, go online find ways to save money on your outdoor gear. Let me know in the comments anything you've found over the years that you're, you're really happy with and you use it. Um, anything I haven't mentioned, any other ways of saving money, let me know. So I hope the weather's better where you are and I hope you're enjoying the outdoors. I, I'm going to brave it shortly anyway to get some fresh air, but until next time, Cheers. Don't take away my breakaway.